but that's so okay. Um, what I'm talking now is a very specific issue in all these kind of modeling. You have been presented by very nice examples from France, Germany, and Spain, trying to apply and adapt the inspired concept using the, this Eagle uh, data model. And also in Austria, we were trying to find a solution, especially for this temporal uh, dimension that comes now uh, in by this huge potential of the Sentinel data because until now most countries have been working on a single observation day. So as a reference, uh, you mostly had error images from one day and it's quite expensive. You, so you only acquired every, I don't know, two years, three years or whatever. But you did not have any information on what is changing throughout the year in a single parcel. And this is where I'm focusing on to give you some um, rudimentary background on our land information system Austria, LISA, that is still under development. But to give there is some light on the horizon because our national mapping agency, they are already in uh, operational implementation of, I would say, a LISA light concept, and the first data should be out by next year. Um, to give you um, a small overview in historic developments, we had different phases financed by different uh, nice uh, organizations. We had Austrian organizations as well as ESA financing different parts of our information system. And I'm concentrating now on the last one, on the last part, how to integrate the temporal information into our system. I have and would like to stress it, this is really a cooperation between different service providers, different uh, scientific uh, entities and different users. And you really need a, a large team, as you know, one single entity is not able uh, to conduct such a business. <coughs> so just to give you an insight what I'm talking about, of course we started, uh, as I said, with, with a uh, author photo, we, we sampled it as well from 25 centimeters, which is the original resolution to 50 centimeters. We as well use a normalized different surface model. Um, so you can create it from LiDAR data. So it's really giving you, you the object height. So we need one basic LiDAR fly for Austria giving us the ground uh, uh, height level, but then the object level. Uh, we do not derive from the lighter data because it's too expensive. We're speaking of 150 euros per square kilometer, but we derive the surface model directly from the aerial images because using this uh, dense image matching techniques, it's quite cheap. I'm speaking here of five euros per square kilometer. <coughs> then we have uh, segmentation or alternatives that you take existing polygons but uh, essentially is that you derive objects, and those objects can be classified, can be attributed. So we had the first attribution um, on a similar scale than Julian was now explained for the very high resolution COZ, uh, what you see here are the main uh, eagle land cover components uh, that we apply here. Um, but this is still two-dimensional information. And, and we often compare the Eagle to the LCML, where you have all the freedom, like in LCML, you have two more dimensions. You have the horizontal strata, which is comparable in the Eagle with the uh, spatial configuration. And in addition, in LCML, you have the uh, vertical strata. To our, uh, I mean, somehow you have to practically implement it and we, we found there is not so much need for the vertical strata, but there would be need for the time dimension. How do we integrate this time dimension in our data set? Because thinking of time dimension, mostly we speak in land cover, okay, this is the land cover with a certain reference here. So you would like to stress the dominating or main land cover within one year. And you have now different types of changes until now, we only concentrated on the state changes. So you, when you compare two different maps, take Korean land cover, it's a comparison of a status quo in 2012 compared to something between 2016. But 
like within one year you can have a lot of psychic changes. I mean the French presented very nicely how to deal with psychic changes in, in your world. So you define a own characteristic for the temporal dimension. And here we wanted to really model it, to bring it in, into this um, inspire and eagle world. I'm not so much talking of the last example, these conditional changes. Here we're talking of a time, time dimension of decades of years. If you think of a forest grow, growth, I mean, this growth for 100 years, for example. So I'm not talking on, on this issue here. Um, if you think of also what Julian presented nicely with this basic data model. We have also inspired the land cover data set and then we have the stable units, the land cover unit. And the land cover unit uh, exists, you can have one or several land cover observations. Could be a green class, could be your national class, um, but it consists of several land cover components. As we have the, the Spanish um, example uh, taken, for example, from the eagle land cover components, and we have this parametric observation still attached. And, and we played a bit around with this parametric observation because we wanted to attach uh, values, changing <coughs> values over time to the land cover unit. So we say the land cover unit is the stable one over time, um, but in the land cover unit, you have, can have land cover observations like a spatial configuration. In LSML, you often have the example of a mixed forest. You have deciduous patches, coniferous patches, but this is a spatial configuration. But we also think you have a temporal configuration. If you think of an agricultural field, I will have one example that changes throughout the year quite uh, in a cyclic manner. So we took this parameter type, we added um, several, I'm sorry if you cannot read it uh, to the very last point, um, we had to add a countable parameter, the index parameter. The index <coughs> parameter, if you want to say, for example, the NDVI of one sentinel scene for one single observation, date, then you can do it with the parameter type. So to integrate uh, these ones, we call it somehow this time machine, so that you have within one land cover unit several land cover components, not in a spatial configuration, but in a temporal uh, configuration. And this is where we need this valid from and valid to. For example, if you plow a field, it will be plowed, I don't know, from 1st of March to end of March, and then the vegetation uh, that is seeded in there will start to grow. So we will have a herbaceous vegetation from 1st of April to, I don't know, maybe to 15th of June until it is harvested. Um, skip this one. So the basic idea was <coughs> we have some kind of NTBI time series. This is called uh, for us a parametric observation and this is really in the database. And then we classify these whole temporal profiles according to different land cover components. And the total Within the unit, you have a specific sequence of land cover components. And then, of course, we, we have to name the child somehow, and then we call it uh, periodically herbaceous or permanent herbaceous. Periodically herbaceous would mean a typical arable land, but we really try to avoid land use terminologies because, to our opinion, arable or grassland is really a land use terminology. It defines how you use the land, you use it as an arable, because if you take as an example uh, a clover field, will have a 100% vegetation cover throughout the year, but it's an arable area, it's not a grassland area, or several set aside land. So we are not able to tell from the remote sensing if it is grassland or arable, yes, we might be if we observe several years. So always uh, depends a bit on the time series. Uh, to give you a practical <laughs> example, this is an arable area in the east of, of Austria. This is a typical uh, vegetation site here of, of a wheat field. So you see the different steps, as you <coughs> know from your country, different agricultural fields. If we observe the NDVI, these are really NDVI from uh, sentinel observations, it's still a 
not a very dense time series because it's still only from one satellite, so we hope to have now the full uh, potential of the two uh, sentinel. But then we classify this and we have uh, the time dimension. We have the bare soil until, I don't know, um, mid of March, then you have herbaceous vegetation, then you harvest it, and, and then you have this uh, pre-growth of vegetation over the winter season. And um, we have uh, provided a, a small internet application as well because everything is stored in R, software R, and using this R Shiny, I can give you the web address further on, then you can really click on one polygon. Uh, you have the whole time series for the polygon, you have uh, the single land cover components, also as a related table. And there you really see, so with a single shape file, we would not be able to produce examples like this. So here we really need more intelligently structured data formats. And nowadays it's possible thanks to all the developments in geoinformatics. So we have a parametric observation. We have the temporal uh, uh, sequence of land cover components and uh, we have additional aggregated value on the land cover unit. Okay, so this is not to stress too much your time, was a very small focus on, on one um, single element here. So if you want to try it for yourself, there is one demo application for um, a rather small area in, in Austria. Uh, so we extended that inspired data model and we applied the Eagle model and then all the thoughts that were collected. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Myself, any questions to get out? We have five minutes. Is the behavior, and this is where your temporal grass can come into place. 